Okay, beloveds, here we are in the beautiful energies of embodiment. It's a very unique and different phase of our ascension that we're getting into right now. And I, I was called to do this webinar, not just because of the surrealness of being in the embodiment phase, but also because I was starting to get downloads on how the timelines are being affected and how this latest collective timeline shift has changed everything for everyone, uh, which is quite unique. And I don't even feel that people will realize what has just occurred uh, for a while. But for those of us who are in the embodiment phase, we feel it and we feel the profound effects of that already. And there are things that we can do to assist our own process so that we don't get uh, spun out or unbalanced or a little too spacey, or you're trying to manifest or you're trying to keep up with the timelines because everything accelerates right now at the same time that you're going through this embodiment of your Christed self, which can be quite overwhelming. So let us begin and let's just take the meeting upstairs. All right. So everyone, let us go deep into this transformational energy that is available to us right now. Everyone, close your eyes and come into the presence, into the heart, recognizing and honoring the source within. And just breathe and get very present, letting all of the lower reality just fade away and just really unifying with your brothers and sisters in this now moment. Breathe and give it a nice ah, ah, relax and sigh into it right through the heart. Letting all of the worries, everything just fade away. And just being here in this now, unifying in this present moment into the stillness of source, the truth of divinity and love within, surrendering all lesser realities with ease, grace, and wisdom, shedding all illusion, lesser realities, judgments and distortions be gone. Feel the energy of love and the vibration of divinity that you are, which is currently overriding and overwriting your DNA, your energy fields, and your realities. Feel the ascension timeline, the crystalline timelines, that pure light. Feel it, let it spin through your energy fields opening the ascension column, opening the heart torus, coherence, coherence, coherence. Feel the joy and the freedom and the creativity that's right there, ever present, lifting the self-imposed veils. Let it go. Welcoming forth the Christ itself. The embodiment of the crystalline as our primary experience. Feeling deep gratitude for this global activation of embodiment. Celebration, the joy, fully embracing the beautiful and the bizarre. The experience of ascension. Feel the gratitude for being in the tribe that's experiencing ascension in this now moment. 
celebrate the embracing of our spiritual path and witnessing as source, as a fractal of source, the change that we are creating across the dimensions and densities through our embodiment. Really feel into that, brothers and sisters. Breathe. And now feel the crystal cup of the heart overflowing with crystal and plasma, that pure diamond light of the Christ, the golden chalice overflowing with the pure love of life, the experience, the source, the Christ that I am. Let it flow out to all of creation in this now. Be that presence, own it. Now keep your eyes closed and receive this message. We have just experienced a very unique collective timeline shift. We've been told embodiment changes everything. Activated heart centers would change everything. Our activated heart centers, our Christed heart centers, our energy fields and crystalline DNA create new realities. We had enough embodiers to trigger the next collective timeline and a more vibrant organic experience of ascension. This is changing time dynamics on a global level. The collective timelines have shifted to create and accommodate embodiment. They are synchronistic, they're working together. This has a strong effect on our personal and collective realities as we merge with our higher selves right through the body. Many of you realize the magnitude of what is occurring with these collective timeline shifts. Our goal as star seeds, gatekeepers, grid workers, light workers has always been to provide the ascension experience for as many willing hearts as possible while still honoring free will choice. When we collectively shift timelines, the first embodiers and those focused on ascension receive a unique gift, the revelation of our creator state, our creator beingness, in form. It feels remarkable and is a wonderful moment in our ascension experience. And we use this expanded perspective and vibration to create peace and freedom and ascension for all. Touch your heart in this now and smile and radiate pure cosmic light, pure love in this now, right through your DNA, your heart, your fields, all of your multidimensional self. In and as oneness of source. Take a breath. So it is. Open your eyes. Welcome to the meeting upstairs. <laughs> and if you will allow me, I'd like to share some intel on timelines for our grounded understanding. Now, the way that I can operate in this current state of consciousness, because embodiment is overriding uh, my lesser realities, my lower self as well, is to work with notes. So pardon me if I peer down at my notes once in a while. Timelines, uh, just for our, our comprehension, uh, the way that this webinar is laid out is we're going to go through some structure first to just kind of review and understand how timelines work so that you can then work with them. 
So the first bit is a little bit grounded. Timelines are based on personal and collective Taurus fields. That's how we build realities in the upper realm and then we come in and live them. So they are created to resonate with a bandwidth of frequency, which provides a certain experience. So Taurus fields, if you're familiar with Taurus, Taurus looks like this. Taurus fields, spinning light, Taurus. The Taurus fields they hold vibrational realities in place. Now, this is how time dynamics are held in place. Energy fields, planetary expressions, personal and collective expressions. This is how they're all co-created. Thoughts and emotions and actions imprint toroidal flows, the spiral loops within the Taurus fields. So you are constantly, we are collectively and personally imprinting toroidal fields. And when a Taurus field around a planetary consciousness, like here's Gaia. So her Taurus fields are all creating and holding certain vibrational bandwidths for an experience. So a lower 3D experience, just like the Taurus fields around you or around the sun, they're going to hold certain vibrational realities and experience in place. And that's all it is, is an experience. So our thoughts and our emotions and our actions in, say, a 3D reality would be very dense. So it's holding, it's locking that in place. And that's been our experience for quite a while. In density, these keep the Taurus fields locked in place for an experience of separation and time. Our experience of time is based on emotional imprints on a Taurus field. So it creates dense memory fields, which keep us in the illusion of past, present, future, the structure of linear time and separation. So the only way that source, all of us, can experience a denser experience of past, present, and future or separation altogether is to create a reality. And when you're uh, living in a body on a planet in a vibrational bandwidth that's created for a dense experience of a planetary consciousness, like 3D, 4D, we're consistently uh, imprinting it with our emotions and our thoughts and our actions. And then it creates memory. It creates the past, present, future experience. And that gives us the experience of time. I hope that lands well. So emotions are magnetic and thoughts are electric. So these dense electromagnetic fields keep us just out of phase with the truth of presence, nonlinear now time. Now, higher timelines don't work in the same way. Higher timelines don't retain memory in the same way because they're less dense. So in order to experience that, you start phasing out of the density of uh, emotion and thought and, and dualistic uh, activity. Higher timelines are based on a crystalline, multidimensional, less dense. It's a very different, less linear experience of time, which a lot of you are starting to experience as we ascend because timelines become less dense, they're less emotional, and therefore more fluid. And as the vibration rises, the side effect of all the photonic light coming in and the switching of the ages, as the energy rises and energy influxes come in, and most importantly, the collective consciousness rises in vibration, we gain access to higher realms, new earth realms. Now, Gaia has the same system. So the new earth reality already exists. It's already a vibrational field that's out there. That's what the crystalline grid, the, the bridge to that higher dimensional, higher dimensional fields is about. The new earth already exists. That field was created and is available since the 12, 12, 12. Um, she's already created that and it's already there. So now we're just, my, when I talk about migrating realities, migrating realities is just us now resonating with those higher fields. Solaris, the sun, there she is with her sunglasses on because hey, it's pretty bright. Solaris, the sun has a, also has a similar system 
and all the, the planets and the stars and the galaxies, and universes, all held together with the same torus fields. They get massive. And then you have toruses within toruses, fields within fields, the whole wheels within wheels. Now you can see where that comes from. That, um, that saying is, uh, this, this is what the science is behind that. So Solaris has a similar system. As the increase in the, in the photonic light quotient hits our part of the galaxy and starts stimulating our star, she starts then stimulating, she, he, doesn't matter. Um, Solaris starts stimulating the planetary consciousness and then you start getting access to these different fields, these different uh, vibrational bandwidths for experience. And again, it's just an experience. Don't think of it as here and there, it's just phasing into a, a new experience. Now, since Solaris overlights all the planets and life and the massive toroidal fields of the solar system, uh, stars themselves are capable of running multiple realities at the same time, which is why our divine human DNA and our fields and everything are based on, you know, when we talk about the solar cosmic Christ, it's the same system. It's a system that's built for, uh, that's fract a fractalized representation of stars. So you're working in the same system that a star would use to create multiple realities at once, running multiple uh, bandwidths, multiple torus fields at the same time. Note that the solar cosmic Christ template is also the same template that's used for stars. So when we talk about our star selves are turning into the solar cosmic Christ, that's what we're talking about, becoming more crystalline, more star-like so that you can have the experience of multiple realities at the same time, which is what we're getting into with embodiment. All of a sudden you're starting to feel yourself losing the bandwidth of the lower dimensional Taurus field and starting to resonate with the higher Taurus field. But as the ascension occurs, the photonic light penetrates these Taurus fields. It breaks apart the illusion of duality, the right, wrong, good, bad, here, there dynamic. And with our awakening and our choice, conscious choice, we clear the dense thought patterns and emotions. That's why emotional clearing is such a huge part of our ascension process, because then you are no longer imprinting your fields and the collective fields in the same way. So obviously we have gotten to a point on the, on the collective timeline where enough of us were not imprinting the realities with dense duality, and all of a sudden you get access to crystalline bridge, you get access to higher dimensional self, higher dimensional realities, and the new earth reality is starting to come forward. So it's a 5D Taurus field rather than the 3D. And, so, and some of you that are really freeing yourselves from those old dynamics are starting to get into your, your solar cosmic Christed state where you're able to access multiple realities and other higher dimensional realities all the way up to 12, 144, however you want to name it, you're getting into the simultaneous realities, which can be overwhelming on the body. So we take it step by step. But collectively, we've hit that point on the timeline where now embodiment, because our resonation has changed, we are now accessing and unlocking that experience for everyone. It's quite, uh, it's quite amazing. So this is why we lose the charge of memory during ascension. A lot of you having that experience over the last decade or so, you're like, wow, I just can't remember. Like you have a memory, but it doesn't have the emotional charge. You can remember things, or maybe you don't remember things, but it doesn't have the same charge. So it's because the electromagnetic operation of density is not operating in your fields anymore and in your heart and now you're open to a nonlinear experience and this is going to be important to remember so if it feels like wow this is a lot of information it's important to remember as we go into rewriting your narrative so the so if you've taken if you've taken like ascension path or whatever you understand that these torus loops these time loops these are timelines so your timelines are all based on torus fields and they're 
with just bazillions of parallel realities running at the same time. But in our, in our lower consciousness, we can handle a few in density. And then as you expand and as you extend, you, as you ascend, you can expand your consciousness into being able to, to handle and navigate multiple realities at the same time. But in a Taurus loop, you, you have the, the opportunity as you expand into the higher dimensional, wider, uh, more expanded, lighter, less dense. But as we're expanding out into this, you, you always hit those points on the timeline where you have the choice to level up. And that's what collectively we made a choice to jump into the next collective uh, reality, the next collective bandwidth of, this, of these Taurus fields. But you find if my little cheesy demonstration here, here's evolution, here's timelines. So you're going along and you're, you're raising your vibration and your timelines are getting looser and you're always going to hit that little point. I made these little points, these little points on the timeline where you have a choice. And that's the thing I want you to pay attention to as we go through um, these shifting your narratives, because those points are also nonlinear. They are consistent. You consistently have the choice to navigate your, your realities and, and, and create whatever it is that you would like to experience. But collectively, when we hit those choices on the timeline, that's like the jump point. When we talk about leap, now's the time. That's what gate work is all about. We have the opportunity because bigger things are happening like with Gaia or with the, with the sun, you know, bigger things are happening and all of a sudden you're, you have access like all these different toroidal fields that are nesting within each other, within the universe, galaxy, solar system, planetary consciousness, and then right within the collective and right within your personal fields. When there's um, uh, ascension points, when there's gates that open and unlock, that's cosmic stargates. That's what we've been working on if you're not familiar with gatekeeping and grid work. It's like all, it's this divine synchronization where it's like, oh, there it is, gateway. And that's, that's an opportunity for us to welcome in this new light and make a choice consciously. And there's been enough of us doing unity meditations and enough people getting into peace and choosing the higher reality that we had an opportunity to use embodiment. Embodiment is embodiment of that frequency. You're welcoming forth your Christ. You're going to stop, start operating as your higher self. And enough of us made that choice. You bring in that frequency. And the next thing you know, you are becoming a conduit of the crystalline grid system itself. You're becoming the return of the Christ right through your DNA. Your DNA is actually creating that. So then you start getting into these bliss states. So when we have these collective jump points, that's what just happened. So this happens personally. This happens collectively. This happens as a planetary consciousness. This happens as a solar system, as a galaxy, as a universe. You can see how this is all fractalized representations of the one. It seems individual in, in density. It seems like it's just you making up your mind. But... Collectively, we're also making up a collective mind and Gaia is making choices and Solaris is making choices. But us, as there's, there's no separation, so us, when we're making those individual choices to level up, to ascend, to become the, our Christed selves, we are affecting all the realities through what we do. And what just happened with the collective timeline shift actually affects the entire galaxy and the ascension of this galaxy, it's quite uh, remarkable. Okay, so let's get into shifting timeline, shifting time dynamics. So bliss states of divine love start to become our new normal during embodiment. The true self stepping forth into form may feel surreal. I know for me personally, it feels quite surreal. I'm actually surprised that I can do a webinar at all. <laughs> Most of the time, but it's uh, but but we're balancing. I I know you know I'm very familiar with the ascension process, and I know you get very expanded. Wow, everything feels so weird. But I'm going to have to be able to function right because otherwise we're uh, ascending off on our own, and we don't get the unity consciousness. So the body and the consciousness will adjust. It always has. It always has, beloveds. If you're at that point where you're like, wow, I have never felt like this before, 
you know what it's like. You know what it's like. It, it's always done this throughout this process. This consistent sensation of love that comes through embodiment is profound and purposeful. Embodiment changes everything. So you're carrying the frequency. Then your body adjusts, you level up. Body adjusts, level up. It's like a balloon. Keeps getting bigger and bigger. Our experience of time and gravity, which is also another factor in time dynamics, changes as we resonate with the higher fields of the new earth. Time becomes more pliable. We feel floaty, blissful, free. A lot of you experiencing like a levitation type dynamics because you're coming out of the denser time fields and you're getting released from linear time. Can feel quite abstract, surreal. You feel like you're leaving. The higher new earth realm is woven into vast galactic fields, creating a whole new universe. So you're becoming part of that function, becoming the higher self. It's a very different state of consciousness, which does not create dense thoughts, emotions, and distortions as with the lower timelines. So that's going to be your challenge is to not step back into something that feels comfortable. You feel clear, neutral, handle challenges from that perspective. That is connected to DNA activation as well. As our mastery strands, if you want to call them layers, that's fine. As our mastery DNA strands activate, disharmony won't even be part of your reality. You will literally vibe out of the ability to create distortion and density as you level up, as you become a master. Those timelines and fields, those Taurus fields do not support that frequency, so it cannot exist in that bandwidth. That's why the masters literally cannot screw up. It's just not even, it, it's not even part of their bandwidth. And if you remember the message about um, from Gaia, from last year that nothing sticks in the new earth, you know, that uh, miscreations or distortions don't stick in her new earth field. That's why that reality cannot maintain distortion. So any miscreations or distortions or thoughts that are off or whatever immediately get dissolved or they descend into the lower bandwidth again. So right now we're bridging worlds, feeling both. Our old realities start to dissolve because we do not imprint timelines. There's a key. We don't imprint timelines with strong emotions any longer. You get very neutral and it's not a passive thing. It's a creative love, life, vitality, uh, state of beingness. So our, our experience of dense time was a uh, rule dominated by judgment, memory, beliefs, and fear. Higher timelines run on clarity, purity, love, and collective service. Always service to the collective because you become part of the oneness again. So you wouldn't go off on your own and try to create something that would disturb. As we collectively shift timelines, old timelines are also affected. So we're, go we're witnessing those, those changes already. Uh, but notice how the past seems really gone, dissolved. You know, it's just fading out of your memory fields. And those magnetic memory fields, which create the experience of time, are starting to lift from the subconscious and the collective subconscious, which creates a lot of Mandela effects, a lot of bizarre um, things, missing, coming, going, and of course, all the changes in relationships and projects and creations, services, co-creations change, projects accelerate or they drop off altogether. Mandela effects start to increase, objects appearing, disappearing. It gets very interesting. Enjoy it. Stay neutral and always call forth the highest organic timelines, the highest service and experience for your journey. Every day, every day, we'll get into this. Realities are in flux right now because this is a major collective shift. So everyone's sorting out their personal choices right now because when a collective timeline shift, a collective higher timeline becomes available, the embodiers go quantum. So that quantum effect, the higher vibration starts pulling you 
into that next reality. And you can either surrender to it and go with it and go, okay, I'm going to operate from this now, or you can struggle with it as long as you, as long as you desire. But it also brings on this feeling of being surreal. Everything feels surreal. It's a very different experience to start experiencing nonlinear time at the same time uh, you have to pay your rent, move, you know, do, do whatever you're, you're doing in your day-to-day -day existence because you're still having that experience, literally becoming the bridge between worlds, but you're experiencing both at the same time. However, we have some guidance on how to get through this. So the body, the mind, and the ego lost their magnetic compass for their experience. So that's why it feels surreal. But the body is built for this. That's the thing. As the crystalline structures activate and the crystalline DNA comes online, it adapts easily with your full support and guidance, beloveds. It really does. We are, we're migrating realities in this now to the ascended new earth platforms. And the, the new reality, the only reason why we have a collective timeline shift is because the, the collective has voted. We have, have a dom dominant collective choice to go for peace and the higher choice. And even though that may not seem rampant in the lower timelines right now, the shift has begun. You know, the, the shift's been on for a while, but this embodiment is a higher acceleration of that. And because it holds a higher vibration, you're going to see a lot more people awakening. But remember, through, through this this period of transition, because we're all in transition right now. This is just an experience. You know, try not to get married to it. Try not to fix it or worry about it or whatever, because that creates a density. And then you start imprinting your, your own Taurus fields and then you, know, you go back into density. It will feel unknown for a while. Try not to, to, to latch on to, I need to know exactly what's happening right now because then you start imprinting again you start imprinting your fields with uh, a denser trying to put things in a box so un until this higher this higher nonlinear flowy experience um, entrains your fields and you feel more comfortable with it, um, it it will feel familiar eventually of course um, because it is your true self returning. It's your higher self. You know, your higher self feels very different. Your higher self, as it starts to, you know, wriggle into your reality and your body, is like, oh, we need to change everything. You know, that's what we're hitting right now. So we've had a lot of focus on getting comfortable with the unknown because surrendering to the unusual of unusualness of it is key to our evolution. Because otherwise, you're just, you know, if you get comfortable, then you're kind of falling back into the old reality. So allowing the new light level to change you and to change your experience is training for pliable time dynamics, which is what we're moving into. Nonlinear time, pliable time, where you're going to be able to play with your own timelines in a much stronger way and not try to control reality, but it's a collective thing. It trains you for unity consciousness. And this is a whole new level, next level of DNA activation as well, because all of our experiences in form are based on our, our DNA, how our DNA, uh, how capable is our DNA of projecting a different reality into these toroidal fields. So your DNA is unlocking access to the higher versions of you as a fractal of source. DNA is a recording and a creation device of everything you've ever been on this planet in different galaxies from first separation until now. It has a record of everything you ever have been, are now, and will be. That's how beautiful the divine human genome is. When you're working with the divine human genome, who can provide you with all those different possibilities, who can provide you with the experience of source in form, which is the goal. Uh, you can access time fields and possible outcomes through your DNA. So DNA is actually a way to access uh, all those different possibilities for um, personal and collective realities. We also have collective DNA activation 
happening right now. That's embodiment. That's why so many people are hitting embodiment at the same time, because you're becoming part of that synchronization across the dimensions and densities of uh, what's happening with the solar system, the galaxy, the planetary consciousness, and the collective. It's all about ascension. Um, it's, this is vastly multidimensional, as, as is your, your DNA's kind of living library card <laughs> to everything that you've been here. So uh, if, if you want to dig into DNA, you can either listen to that latest podcast that, that I just put out with Brendan Beecham, or, um, or download the crystalline, the free crystalline DNA ebook uh, on my website to give you an overview on crystalline DNA. But this class is not about DNA, it's about timelines. So we can use the embodiment phase to both witness and experience and create new trajectories during the migration of realities. And you have to understand, it's not just like flipping. We're, it's going to accelerate quite a bit because of embodiment. But right now, as the first runners, as the forerunners, as the way showers, first embodiers, we're the ones who are going to direct and allow this crystalline experience, this experience of nonlinear time to trickle out through the collective. So manifestation in this state of consciousness, manifestation is just another term for alchemic creation. It's just alchemy, just creation. And it requires us to align with the higher trajectory. So we cannot recreate old stories in this new light. Those timeline structures are dissolving on behalf of all. So if you had a 10 year plan, now's the time to throw it in the fireplace and say thank you, but no thank you. Evolution is quite present. <laughs> and as light workers and way showers, we try to stay a step ahead in order to welcome forth the new. If you've heard me talk about that, we're like the snow plows, getting everything out of the way so that people behind us, so that's easier for everyone. And not just easier, but so that collectively, we move forward uh, with as much ease and grace as possible as the old stuff crumbles. So let's get into rewriting your narrative because I found this really interesting. So you, as your higher self, as your multidimensional self and guidance realms, they start to make you very aware of the changes needed. Like it became very clear during my time in Sedona or just day to day, it becomes very clear what's staying, what's going, what needs to be, uh, what needs to be altered in order to resonate with the, with the higher self coming forth. And that is my primary Thing. My primary MO is to fully embody that higher self. And it looks weird and it feels weird and things change and you're still doing the lower level stuff. The higher self is just overriding and overriding the realities to, to shift you into that next toroidal field. And the, the thing to be very conscious of as we go through this, um, especially when you're dealing with uh, timeline shifts, personal timeline shifts, collective timeline shifts, stronger energies, stronger energies are coming forth because we're becoming conduits of the crystalline bridge of the, of the, the crystalline grids themselves. The Lemurian grid just kicked on. That's why we hit the collective timeline shift because now Lemurian is, you know, uh, the past and now you've got the future and the past, boom, merging in this now right through us. That's why it feels so strong and so surreal and why you get that Lemurian energy of like, oh, everything feels kind of flowy and ocean-like. It's, um, that's, that's that energy coming into assisting us into this flowy time. So when you're dealing with timeline shifts and Mandela effects, personal and, and collective, your, your thoughts and your self-expression, your relationships and actions and intentions and creations and your service work, everything is shifting to support that highest vib the highest vibration that you can hold. And collectively, we're going for, we're on the Ascension timeline already. And the organic realities that started to really kick in last September, end of August, last September, all of a sudden you're getting the organic experience that we should have had in 2012. And it just took us a little while 
to, you know, pull away all the inorganic stuff and all the manipulation and everything. That's gone. So that story too is gone. All that manipulation, gone. If you're recreating that, let it go. We are entering into this organic ascension reality, which is why things feel like the way that they should have felt on the 12, 12, 12, because now it's collectively. Now collectively we can handle it. So remember that we are completely different beings since the end of 2012. This is just us waking up to that reality. The shift to the organic timeline just makes us aware of how different we are in this embodied state of consciousness. So we're starting to push the edges of our comfort zones to the max. We have to. Our ascension requires it. And the perspective broadens and this mastery level patience starts to kick in because we see the inevitability of love and the ascension timelines and the inevitability of ascension. You're like, we're really on this thing. You know, we care, but we don't carry. And yet the human is walking in both worlds. So many things are still time-based, still have to pay your rent and, you know, pack up stuff or whatever, but we aren't attached to the experience. So whatever it is that you're going through in your personal experience right now, try not to be attached to it because then you're imprinting and staying in that, that lower Taurus field, that those lower Taurus realms. So if you can stop imprinting it with worry, fear, distortion, and, and come back and allow the higher self to drive, um, we embrace the freedom to make decisions moment by moment, so, so much about being in the moment and not just as a catchphrase, but as a way of life, as a way of beingness. In the flow, free to be our true selves. We operate from the present freedom within the heart rather than projecting it as a future goal to get to, pulling that right into. So let's get into the how-to. All right, let's pay forward what we know about time dynamics, this, let's pay forward what we know about imprinting time dynamics and apply it to rewriting our narratives to align with our embodiment and ascension timelines. Everybody take a breath. So density, we know that density is created by thoughts, emotions, and memories created by that dense charge. Now, divine love is a neutral state of beingness. Divine neutrality is that eye of the storm, eye of the Taurus. Everyone uses the eye of the storm metaphor because it's the ascension column. It's the eye of the, it's the, eye of the Taurus. It's being in the middle. So you're not swayed by all the timelines and thing, craziness that's going on around you. Less intense emotions, less imprinting what you don't desire. And what I mean um, by, you know, the emotion of, love, what would be considered a positive emotion. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the, the, what would be labeled as negative, you know, fear and worry, doubt. Um, so less intensity equals less density, less imprinting of memory, emotions, less entanglement with the lower timelines. Embodiment makes the old stories feel long gone, done, been there, done that. So first, and if you have a pen and a pad, if you want to light ground some of this, you can always listen to the recording afterward. But first, you need to get to know the higher self and the possibilities for your trajectory. This is engaging your spiritual maturity. If you are someone who has been doing ascension practices, spiritual practices, meditation, the movement, the love, the clearing, all the ascension path material, all of the ascension path process. What you were, what you are, and what you're becoming is your choice, your creation. So we are going to be absolute masters of our own creation in a conscious way. We used to do it unconsciously, but the time for unconscious creation is ending if you're hitting embodiment phase, because the higher self will literally just take over and start just you know, doing just co completely taking away everything that, that doesn't match anymore. So it's best to 
keep up and get to know what your higher self has in heart. So this may require an examination of what you are not. I highly recommend doing the, the linear work of journaling during this time because a lot of people are like, oh, I feel so surreal. I can't even pick up a pen. You know, try, you know, make, make the effort, at least meditate on it, at least pace the floor and talk it out. Do some kind of light grounding uh, it, uh, experience to pull it into this realm so that you don't get spun out or depressed because you're feeling surreal and you can't stay grounded or whatever. So this may require an examination of what you're not, what doesn't serve any longer. And you know this in your heart. Put everything on the heart scale. You know, think back to the scale with the feather. What feels right? What doesn't feel right? Use it. Use that tool. Put it on the heart scale. What, what makes my heart feel like a feather? What makes it feel like, oh, just way, way too dense, you know, and you can take it off the scale altogether, or you can go, okay, I just need to balance it out, balance it out, you know, little by little, you have plenty of space to do this. Um, so, and this continues to shift as embodiment takes over. The stuff that was on the scale that felt good before, you're like, whoa, out of balance now. So always, you know, take a look at what doesn't serve any longer and notice that this, let's take note, that this is a heart reality. Go for the feeling, the love, the creativity. You're going to have to learn how to feel in a different way. If you haven't, anybody who's hitting embodiment knows how to feel. But if you're not hitting your embodiment yet, if you're not feeling just completely overwhelmed by the higher self step, stepping in several times a day or, or consistently, um, you're going to have to get into that feeling state. 5D is a feeling state. It's a state of consciousness. It's very fluid and it's all based on love and compassion and uh, and service, divine service. So what serves you becoming creator incarnate, love incarnate? There are many lower level projections that may influence you with the, you should be doing this, you should be doing that, you should be doing, that. turn it off, turn off those dynamics. They're just programs, they're just other realities that are running at the same time, bless them. You know, don't shun them because what you resist persists, right? So don't shun them. Bless them as not your path. Thank you. No, thank you. Embrace to erase, we always say, right? So embrace it to erase it. Honor this as a return to being pliable. Remember, this is your natural state. It feels new right now because it's been a while. But being pliable, being pliable about your own day, your own path, everything, you know, you've got, you've got to mix it up. You can't keep repeating the same things and expect a different result, right? Insanity. So non-linear beingness coming from the goal of love, keeping that in heart, my goal is to become divine love, the highest expression of source that I can embody in this now. And you take a look at, at understanding that ascension, shifting dimensions, huge, right? Shifting dimensions right through the body. We haven't done it before. So this is why it feels so weird because we're like, whoa, you hit this wall all of a sudden you're like embodying and it feels really bizarre and exhausting or extremely stimulating. There's a million directions you could go into because all of a sudden the book is wide open. The realities, the toroidal fields are wide open for limitless possibility and limitless creation and uncreation. So you don't have to make up your mind for the rest of your life. That's density. Now we're getting into this free flowing thing. And, and remember that it is a process. Remember it is a process. Creation is constant. You're just becoming more aware of it. You can always change. Higher realities are consistent change. So we're going to have to get used to this going to have to get used to this. You know, the old structure is not there. Can't count on things being the same. Nothing sticks. We have to get used to it. Play with everything. What happens? What if it's a timeline where, I don't know, maybe you're still running the same thing? Thank you. Train says yes. What if you're still running the same thing? Every morning I get up and I jog. What if this morning I get up and I take a walk 
in a different direction and I feed the birds instead. You know, anything, just anything to mix it up and see what happens. Hi yourself, let's see, you know, hi yourself, uh, uh, show me, what should we do this morning? I always get up and meditate at the same hour or I always do the same mantra or wh whatever it is. You're gonna have to mix it up. My med meditations have been all over the place lately. Still meditating, but I'm like, let's, let's try this. What if I do this? What if I do my commands here? And then I go into mantras. What if I don't do TM today and I do a different kind of meditation, just really playing with it to see where the DNA and the body and the timelines and the higher self want to be in the moment. It's really mm, seize the now. Note when that jump point, the loop point in your own personal journey presents. You'll know it. All of a sudden you're like, wait a second. I'm feeling, you'll, you'll feel like frustration. You'll feel like all, all of a sudden there's, there's density in the body or, or you might start feeling uh, emotional or, or like, oh, I can't believe I have to do this again or whatever. That's, the, that's your trigger point. That's your jump point. Quick, in the moment, just start playing with it. In the moment, I gotta change something. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm still doing this. Change. Do anything different in that now moment to start entraining your fields to get and to change your personal narrative. And let's get into personal narrative now. So in the state of consciousness, in the state of transition that we're in right now, it may be tempting to discard everything and completely disconnect into bliss. <laughs> Wouldn't that be wonderful? And for those of you who have set up your live stream, where you don't have bills, bills to pay or houses to worry about or services to run or people to deal with or whatever. And you could just go off and do that. I love you. Thank you. Go, uh, go, go forth and prosper. Um, retreats are lovely and we certainly do need them right now. You're going to have to take that time to step back and go, whoa, just integrate your journey. Get out in nature really, you know, do the forest bathing, do the walk in the woods, do the feet in the lake, whatever you need to do. They're lovely to reset our energies. And we do have to stay uh, entrained with the crystalline grid system, which and, and this collective DNA that's emanating right out of Gaia right now. So in order to receive that, you can't be sitting in front of a computer or on your phone. You've got to walk out and, and really um, do those little mini retreats to kind of reset and it can take 10 minutes, it can take an hour, it can take a week. It depends on how much you get going on in your personal journey. Well, all of our experiences are quite different. But um, it may be tempting, like I said originally, it may be tempting to just go, nothing resonates. I'm out of here, right? And all of us have hit those points in our, in our journeys where you feel like that. You're like, nothing, nothing makes sense. I'm just walking away from everything. You can play with that too. But in order to go into unity consciousness, in order to become part of the larger operation, you have to be in service to others. So you might want some other people around or at least participating in that. So you're gonna to have to come back. But if you're at the point where you've pushed your journey too far and you haven't been doing your practices or taking little mini retreats or doing any kind of um, spiritual connection with the, with the planet or nature or your own DNA or your own heart, you're, you're going to you're gonna have to probably go, you know, full Monty into that. So retreats are lovely and we definitely need um, that to reset our energies. However, an isolated path of ascension is not our mission here. That's a different conversation. If you want an isolated path of ascension, if you're going to go do um, a cave time, you're talking to the wrong teacher. Um, because of the return of unity consciousness is a global operation. And I see that all of us um, have to come out of uh, a cave time and connect with people. And, you know, maybe you're too sensitive and you have to go back and forth, but you got to come out once in a while in order to participate in that larger operation because it's a global ascension. So graduation from these realms requires us to learn how to co-create in peace while honoring our uniqueness because that's how it functions upstairs. It's all co-creation. There's no like one little being running around doing their own thing. It's all collective, 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 collective choice, collective highest interest of all concerned. That's how it operates in the higher realms. And if you wanna 
graduate, if you want to go upstairs, um, if you want to put the tassel on the other side, you got to learn how to do that first. So number one in your personal narrative, what is the higher self's, your embodied self's story in this now? This is a really interesting place to go. Get creative with it because you create that reality. So I'm not going to give you that answer. But your homework, your home play is to write it down in this now. Do that fun journaling work. And if you're somebody who's like, I can't even hold a pen, talk it out, think it out, you know, play, play with this, paint it out, be creative about it, dance it out, whatever it is. Your, your job is to light ground it into this present reality so that the body and the DNA understand, ah, we're going to embrace what the higher self is up to. For the moment, you can either visualize this or take notes. Let's just briefly go into this highest trajectory narrative that is your highest you. Let it contain the true you stepping forth right now. Close your eyes. Take a breath. What do you feel is unfolding with your higher self besides embodiments of the Christ? Is there something else presenting that's really dissolving a lower timeline choice? You create your ascension. What happens to you, for you, through you with this ascension process? What's presenting for us? You know, the royal we, the royal I am, almighty Christ I am. Myself as a unique fractal of your divine beingness, the almighty incarnate. What's the highest brightest thing that we can pull into this now? What's our highest trajectory? I see a lot of, there's infinite possibilities. Wow, there's so much creativity coming in. So many different creations presenting, but I'm still in a body. So what's the, it can be like at least a top 10 list, top 10 highest project, trajectory, trajectories uh, that we can play with in this now that would really allow me to fully express my higher self, Christ itself, right through this body. And as you go into your home play, that's the point that you wanna play with. What's the highest thing? And don't give yourself limitations, no limitations. And I just wanna note this, that many have clung to the galactic stories as their true self, uh, a lot of people mm, kind of latching onto the belief system. I'm going back to the Pleiades. I'm going back home. I'm going back to Sirius. I'm going back to being a star. I'm going back to being an elemental, whatever it is. What's presenting now as these timelines shift across all of your expressions, because it's shifting collectively, everything's opening up. So even the belief systems that you had right up until the time this webinar started may collapse. More light, more love, more opportunity, more synchronicity, more ascension, more embodiment, more possibilities. I thought I was going to be this, but now I'm feeling this. Really go into it. And that's a deeply personal journey. Your higher levels are also changing. That's happening across the board. We're watching it happen upstairs. Higher selves starting to really embody even higher expressions, even higher levels of the mighty Christ I am, becoming part of that. Even the masters leveling up, shedding, transforming to accommodate this collective ascension because it's not just us. It's not just humans on earth. It's not just that. It's happening across the board at the galactic level, at the master level. Everything is being affected. Entire universe is leveling up to change into something new. So we just want to feel into that. Hmm, maybe what I thought I was or what I was going to be are going to change. So take a breath. Feel into that. That's going to be your home play. Something that you should play with today. Pull it into the now. Don't wait until next week. 
pulling into the now. Clear your schedule. What schedule do you have? Clear your schedule. You're, you're, it's up to you. I have things to do. Maybe you need to cancel. Maybe you need to spend time with this. Feel into it. What does it feel like? Wow, I really want to do this now. Get excited about it. Okay, step two. What stays, what goes? This is, cl this is classic, but it's so effective right now. What is different from the lower self? What is different from that lower self perspective? What are you noticing as the biggest difference? You got to pay attention. Examine the clues. There are clues all over the place. Your guidance realms, especially with this group, are all, all over your live stream right now. Examine the clues. Take the signs as they present. Be brave and ask for them. If you've taken my classes, you know, beginning of the day, show me. Anytime during the day, in that moment, you're at a jump point. All of a sudden, you're like, hmm, wait a minute. I'm feeling... Uh, like, like there's a little bit of resistance and not moving forward. Okay, show me. What is it? And then you got to pay attention. You know, use your animal medicine, your energy medicine, feel into it, what's presenting, the phone rings, whatever. You know, pay attention to the clues. Your heart knows. Trust your heart as the, you know, your heart is untouchable. This is the clearest thing you've got. Use it. This is source. This is source. Your heart knows what feels good and what feels off. You're just going to have to trust it and not let the mind or the emotions overwhelm that. Again, no imprinting. Let the heart imprint the fields. Let the heart show you that way. So what needs to step forward and what needs to go? You need to stop creating disharmony, period, or old patterns, moment to moment. That's on you. You know, collectively, we've made this decision. Okay, you know what? We're not, we don't like the old stuff anymore. So we're going to change it. So collectively, we've made that decision. Now the personal uh, a choice to, to keep up with that and to change your own personal life stream in order to keep up with your own embodiment, to take it easy on you, ease and grace, is uh, that's on you. So it will feel like waking up from a dream. We've had this experience several times in our ascension process. You know, I come home from Sedona, I walk in, and I've never lived here before. You know, that sensation. Or you wake up in the morning, who bought all these clothes? What is this place? I don't like this. <laughs> who put the food in that fridge? You know, I don't, you stand in the, in the grocery store. I don't even know what I like to eat anymore. That kind of sensation. It'll feel like waking up from a dream because we are, all right? Because we're waking up from the, re from the lower illusion. So you, you've got to pay attention. What needs to change? Why do I do this? Why am I doing this right now? Why do I live here? Well, why do I wear this? <laughs> why do I think this? Why do I feel this? You know, it's, this is our transition phase. So you've got to take a look at, wait a, wait a second. This is not my higher self. This is just this lower self. Don't judge it. Appreciate it. Thank you, but no thank you. I'm going to have to change that. And you can try to change it overnight because that's the way things work in the higher realms, but you still probably still got some density uh, flowing in your, in your stream. So take it easy on yourself, but also don't project it out as like next month after the solstice, then I'll change everything. Pull it into the now. We'll go through that in a second. Step three. What do I choose to create and express as the higher self, the highest expression? It has to have a heart charge in order to resonate with the, with the higher light, with the higher vibrational fields. All those higher Taurus fields, the higher timelines are, are resonating with the heart. So it has to have that heart charge in order to resonate, in order to, to pull you into that reality. So creative expression to resonate with less dense timelines and 5D dynamics. What does my higher self, my expanded self enjoy in this now moment? And if you haven't found joy in a while, you're going to have to start playing with different things. You're going to have to mix it up because you have to also kind of, uh, I found that I have to kind of prove to uh, my, my higher self. There's like all these little tests, little tests of mastery. Like, let's just see how flexible, how pliable you can be. Let's just see how uh, daring you can be and go into this new thing. 
And it doesn't have to be huge. It could be like those most subtle things, subtle little changes. I'm just going to try this. Ooh, you know what? I'm, I'm still feeling some resistance to um, being with those people or, or, or whatever. So, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go and I'm going to, I'm going to show up and I'm just going to be and, and feel into uh, what serves and, and what, um, what still teaches me something about what my higher self is about. Um, what's the most vibrant creation? You really got to go wide. What's the most vibrant creation without limits? And how does it serve this now? Is it just more work? Are you just creating busyness? Just, you know, because I don't know, I just, I'm feeling all this creative energy. So I just want to like create some busyness so I don't really have to feel what's going on, you know, and that's all, this is all part of rewriting your narrative. Do I need to surrender to what is presenting and stop trying to recreate what felt comfortable or familiar or what felt like my trajectory? Now, these are all the, the, the prompts for taking a look at how we rewrite this personal narrative. Now, note, this is a transitional phase for the entire collective. If you desire to be in service or change services, um, those of you who are in like the way show or empowerment class, it's all about changing your service in order to align. It's wise to pre-design healing because we're in service to the entire collective when we go into this embodiment state. So it's, it's very clever and wise to pre-design, you know, kind of precog healing services heart opening support, solutions and services in alignment with the new earth, since it unfolds quickly and time speeds up. Now this embodiment phase is going to accelerate everything. If you feel that you have to just be and have created space and support for yourself to just be, that's fine. If you start to get bored, you got to move on. The multidimensional self is a highly creative beingness and will want to help out. You know, your, your higher self is going to want to be in service. There's a lot of stuff that you're saying no to because you're like, mm, kind of need my space. That's fine. But you're going to find that the creativity is going to be unstoppable. And that creative vibration of the higher self is going to be unstoppable. So even if it's just light grounding, Visions of new earth can be the simplest thing. And light grounding, again, is just physicalizing uh, ideas and, and heart-based uh, expressions of the higher levels. So that, and it's all creativity, whether it's dance or song, performance, gatherings, writing, light language, whatever it is, that is the realm that we're playing with in new earth. So you're holding that vibration everywhere you go when you start expressing that, even in your personal space, raises your vibration and you walk around and you're that, that little uh, generator of the crystalline grid system. Four, action in the moment is where all of your true power is. Everybody knows that at this point, you just have to put it into action. So we create and we imprint the higher timeline with light and love and source. So if you understand that you're imprinting timelines, possibilities for how your journey unfolds with density, now you're going to imprint higher possibilities with light and love and source. So you see, see the higher trajectory, all, all the things that we just went over, seeing all the possibilities and playing with these higher trajectories, but rather than putting them out there as, as something like, oh, that's going to happen, get on the higher trajectory of multidimensionality, pull it into your power center, your heart, your now moment, and shift it now in order to imprint that future outcome, pulling it into this now. So it's pause, breathe, reset the intention as your now and go. Use your multidimensional awareness. No judgment. No judgment of, oh, that's the wrong choice. Shh. No, thank you. Notice the parallel realities and the timelines as they drop away. So when you make a hard choice and you're taking action on it, moving in that direction, even in the simplest of ways, you're going to notice that other timelines, people, relationships, other things 
start to lose their charge. You know, don't necessarily disappear from your reality altogether. Sometimes they do. But you're going to notice they lose their charge. And all of a sudden you're like, hmm, I guess I just can't hang out with that person anymore. Or I can't do that same thing. There's like, it just flatlines altogether. And this is where you're going to have to pay attention. Because the stuff that's flatlining right now, it's like, I always say dead timelines. So like expired um like a um, um, uh, bike tube, you know, like a deflated tires are just like laying there. You know, it's just like, there's no charge there. It's, it's, it's gone. You know, you can pick it up and try to pump it back up to life, but it doesn't make sense anymore. So you're going to have to use your multidimensional awareness to, to play with many things at the same time. It's multidimensional awareness. Move the energy with action in the direction of the new, so it's like taking action in the, in the direction of like what feels like the highest, freest new thing that needs to happen in this now. And when you take action, then you'll notice, oh, that things start dropping away, new opportunities start presenting. You'll notice, you gotta pay attention. So feel, feel, feel. 5D is this beautiful feeling free state. The Christed state is this feeling free state. You know, so often the masters are like, why are you creating things you don't even want or you don't even enjoy anymore? You know, con consistently reminding us of that. So give yourself plenty of re-examination, self-care moments if needed. And then five, uh, more meditation, more peaceful moments, more alignment practices, because the more you can prioritize divine neutrality and those pure moments of source, just a few a day of the absolute stillness, just hitting, hitting that point of pure stillness where there's no thought, nothing but love, nothing but purity, nothing but stillness, just really feeling the source within, that flexible, flowing, expansion, stillness practices. If you can visualize it often, feel it often, that morning intention set and evening check-in will allow you to self-correct and, and check in each evening too. How did, I, how did I do today? Let me just review my day. If you're in my classes, you know you do the, the review. How did I do today? Okay, let's reset completely, dissolve all the lower timelines, get into the higher timeline, show me, reset my DNA while I sleep, and then you wake up. All right going to do everything different, right? Can't recreate what we did yesterday. And that morning intention setting too of show me the highest trajectories, show me the highest, you know, I'm, I'm going to mix up the day. I'll provide the quantity, you provide the quality, you know, that kind of thing. Really, um, the, the, the meditation and the paying attention and getting into the stillness is going to help you immeasurably as the energies increase, especially dramatically through the solstice and the eclipse or coming into some very strong energies that are going to make you feel, they might make you feel spun out if you don't have a practice. So, so that's the thing. It's like checking in as often as possible and really being in that stillness. And some people are able to just, it goes on autopilot. You just take a breath. Oh, okay. I'm back. All right. Right there. You know, and then all, you'll notice all, all the, uh, the, the chaos or whatever it was that you were miscreating drops away immediately with practice. It's beautiful. So stay focused while allowing the highest trajectory to unfold. And focus is less dense as, as well. It isn't this dense emotional mental activity. That would be 3D. We focus through the heart. It's a feeling state of life. A highest intention, alignment, the spiritual practices to keep yourself attuned to the source within and paying attention to the highest trajectory presenting. It's your creation. Emotionally, mentally, heartfully, feel the higher reality as the now, often. I want you to do this for, let's put a, a little linear frame on it so that we can play with it. All the way through the solstice and the eclipse, Play with this as often as possible, every day, feel your highest trajectory, feel exactly what you want to create. 
and feel it in the now, not as something down the line, I'm gonna get there, feel it in the now, feel the bubbly, beautiful sensation of your gorgeous little dolphin, whatever you wanna create, <laughs> your little Lemurian self, whatever it is you wanna create, uh, the highest, brightest version of me. Feel it as often as possible. Stop, pause, breathe. Let that joy overwrite and override because it is DNA based. And the moment your thoughts and your commands and your feelings tell your DNA what to create, so it is. Try this. So when we get good at shifting ourselves to the highest expression, our unified power is going to be off the charts. It's already happening. We see this with the Sunday Unity meditations already. Magic happens when we're unified as one. And if you're not participating in that, honestly, it's, you know, it's, it's Sunday. It happens every Sunday. Make a moment, create a window for you to participate in at least one of the four uh, throughout, the, throughout Sundays. You know, add your energy to that and feel it. There's full support there, but we're starting to feel it's training us how to operate as one in the state of love. It's not just about meditation. It's not just about creating peace, which it does, but it's, uh, it's also a collective DNA operation. It's an activation of all of us getting our higher trajectories in order, all of us getting our embodiment in order. So here's a, here's a cool little trick. Clear, correct, create. Catch yourself and self-correct thoughts and the, those emotional imprinting, again, it's all about not imprinting memory fields so that you're creating dense timelines anymore. Catch yourself in the moment. Does it align with what I desire to create, my highest trajectory? If not, clear, uncreate the thought or emotional choice in a completely non-judgmental way. In that moment, catch yourself. Mm, clear, neutral. Don't give the lower timeline any energy or power or that lower choice. Love it. Bless it. Thank you. No, thank you. Notice this with, um, you know, I notice this with higher beings all the time. But if you, because they're you know, telepathic, these are telepathic communications. So if you think something that's like a little off or uh, fearful or doubtful or, or a, a little distorted, you catch yourself in the moment, you're like, mm, sorry, you're like, uh, you know, higher beings are consistently in that now, in that state of higher unconditional love. They're like, whatever, okay, you got yourself, that's fine. You know, uh, so that's next, you know, <laughs> they're, they're in, in that moment. And if we can do this, this kind of clear, correct, create, we train ourselves to operate in the same way. So it's clear in the moment, mm, that's a little off. No, thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. All right. So let's just correct, feel the higher choice of love, higher choice, higher timeline. Go for it. The most expansive, limitless thing. Consistently remind yourself, mm -mm, nope, I'm going up here. Consistently correct. Ask the higher self, body, mind. Heal to self-correct all timelines. In this now moment, cross all levels, layers, densities, parallel realities, seen and unseen. Self-correct and align with the higher thing. Okay. You know, you're not apologizing. You're just saying, thank you. No, thank you. Correct. Focus on the higher thing. And when you're rewriting your narrative, that's your list of higher things that you can focus on. Rewriting your narrative. Correct it. Align with higher narrative. Feel it. And then create. Own it. Own it as a creator beingness while staying neutral in the heart. This would be more better. This would be better. This would be more joyful, more service. So it is source levels. Take care of it. Always. Creator beingness, take care of it. Higher levels, take care of it. You can hand over everything <laughs> to the higher self. Higher self is you, not a separate beingness. It's like, mm, higher levels, take care of this. I got uh, things going on. Higher levels take care of it always, um, and, and the same with the the clear, correct, create clear, correct, create. So it's a little 
tool, again, use it. Use it through the gateway, get used to using it, and then it just goes on autopilot. Then you're immediately like, mm, got it, next. Got it, drop it, next. Got it, drop it, clear, next, create. This eye of the storm metaphor is actually, you know, you in the middle of, la la, in the middle of your Taurus field, eye of the storm, right? It's eye of the, eye of the Taurus. You can stay in there and not get swayed by uh, other people's timelines or what's going on with the lower the lower realms because you're still here you're still in the body and you're watching it happen but be more of a, a witness pause and feel the stillness of reunification with source a few times a day in order to maintain balance and neutrality as the lower timelines collapse including your own the storm itself is none of our business just want to mention that it's none of our business that's what I mean by being neutral. You know, we care, but we don't carry. I'm not carrying that on my back. I'm not carrying the responsibility of people doing what they have to do in order to awaken, in order to ascend, in order to reveal. It is what it is. But we focus on creating the new in this moment, creating new support systems for people who are stepping out of the storm. A lot of people are gonna be stepping out of the storm and into the middle, you know, awakening. And you're gonna be like, hey, welcome to the middle, right? How, how can I assist you? Because they're gonna be like, I don't know what just happened. You know, it's awakening on steroids. So we focus on creating the new in this now moment that is creating this calm, peace, love and compassion wherever we go emanating that love light of source in order to change the realities, welcoming those who step into the center as empowered creator beings, not treating them as less than, just embracing them. Okay, honey, come here. You know, would you like some assistance? Some people don't. That's fine. It's fine. They can stand in the middle and be a little weirded out by the experience. It is what it is. Don't become attached to doing something for others or the planet. Uh, Yeshua reminds us of that, that neutrality welcomes in the miraculous. Let the source we, within be the most powerful compass, you know, center, eye of the storm, and honor that. Honor that as the most powerful compass you have. So in this now, everyone take a breath, hands on the heart. Close your eyes for a moment. It's a lot of information and you get to re-listen to it. And there's some exercises for you to play with just to, oh, for some of you, it's just occupying the time space because you're feeling very comfortable with the unknown. For some of you, you're like, mm, I wanna play with what's the next thing that's up for me. Always treat it as play. Some of you getting frustrated with repeating the same, the same, the same. This is going to help you immensely. And on behalf of the whole, we fully support everyone in their highest choices, for their highest timelines, radiating this pure love and support out into the collective, understanding that in order for us to have the full experience of embodiment, we're going to have to function in a different way. It's a learning process. We're patient and we're patient with others. All of our classic mastery practices, non-judgment, gratitude, forgiveness, neutrality, divine love, all coming into play. And in this now, we command and creates. And you can just listen to my words and own them as your own, no separation. I call forth the pure cosmic light of the I am presence to surround, penetrate, and surge through me. Mighty light of the Christ, alight the path of my divine ascension and come forth quickly, permanently, and completely in this now crystalline DNA light up. Thank you. I love you. I am blessed. I am ready for all that is new in my divine state of embodiment. 
I welcome forth my Christ itself to override and overwrite all of my uncomplimentary realities, thoughts, actions, and creations into harmony, purity, and my highest ascension timelines. Higher levels present the guidance, creations, inspiration, opportunities and synchronicities for my highest expression of divinity and service in this now, each moment renewed. Show me the most brilliant, joyful, heart aligned creations and present them upon my path this day, opening the gateways within me, opening the cosmic stargates as my birthright to receive all that I am in this now, all of my pure creator state of beings in this now. And I remind myself of this by feeling it as often as possible each day. I am becoming my pure higher self, an expression of crystalline radiance which brings peace unconditional love and freedom to all of creation through the embodiment of my I am presence. These are my core values, my core compass from which all of my creations radiate. I am the pure presence of source, limitless, immortal, omnipresent, I ordain my DNA to express this through this form in this now. So be it. Hands on the heart. Take a breath. Thank you, beloveds. It's been an absolute honor connecting with you this day.